Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Runcam Split HD. This device is designed to be paired with either the Vista or Arianet DJI Digital FPV video transmitters and will enable you to record up to 2.7K 60 frames per second footage to an onboard micro SD card. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, measure its latency, and provide you with some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the Split HD camera, you can find an ND16 filter, which you can fit on the camera lens, four 28mm long M2 screws, which will enable you to combine the Vista and DVL units, a bag with plastic M2 nuts, two pins female and male JST connectors for connecting the DVL board to your flight controller, and the plastic part, which is going to protect the micro SD card slot and prevent the micro SD card from being accidentally ejected. In terms of features and specs, the split HD system is based on two components, an HD camera and a DVL board. They are connected between them using an 11 cm long data cable, which is not identical to the MIPI cable, which is used for connecting the DVL board to a DJI digital FPV video transmitter. Anyway, this camera is preparatory for the split HD system and no other cameras are supported. I was told that in the future, based on the success of this version, a nano version might be available as well, and I assume that they will use the same DVR and you'll be able to swap the cameras. As for the camera unit, it features a 4x3 CMOS sensor and supports up to 2.7K 60 frames per second videos. The videos are saved to an onboard micro SD card, up to 128GB micro SD cards are supported, and it is recommended to use an ultra fast micro SD card, especially when recording high res videos. As for the DVR board, it can only be powered using 5V. Over here, you can find plus 5V and ground pads, and over here, RX and TX pads, which are used for connecting the DVR board to a flight controller, and then after configuring it, you'll be able to use an auxiliary switch in order to control the recording procedure. In addition, it features a pretty big heatsink and 20 by 20 and 25.5 by 25.5 mm mounting holes, which are identical to the ones which are used on the Vista unit, so you'll be able to mount the Vista unit directly on top of it. It also features an onboard microphone, a button which will enable you to control the recording procedure manually, and finally, last but definitely not least, an onboard gyro sensor, which will enable you to stabilize the footage in post-processing using the GyroFlow application. As for power consumption, when the all-in-one flight controller was supplied with 12 volts, the added current was 0.25 amperes when the split HD system was turned on. In terms of dimensions, the weight of the split HD system is 20 grams, and including a Vista unit, the total weight is 39.3 grams. The outer dimensions of the camera unit are 19 by 19 by 24.3 millimeters. The outer dimensions of the DVR board are 29.2 by 30 by 6.5 millimeters, and the height of the DVR board and the Vista unit is 18.6 millimeters. As for configuring the Split HD system, it is done using Runcom's app, which is available for both iOS and Android devices. When opening it up, you'll be able to select your device. In that case, it's the Runcom Split HD. And then in order to configure your desired resolution for recording videos and other parameters, press the QR code configuration button. Then over here, you'll be able to select the video quality, set the loop recording option, Toggle the option which is going to start auto recording once the device is powered up. Select the resolution of the recorded footage between the following options. Set the recorded volume, shutter speed, ISO configuration. Select whether you'd like to display an indication when the camera is recording and the resolution that is currently used when the camera is not recording on the OSD of your goggles and turn on or off the WDR option. Under general, you'll be able to set the parameters which you can currently see on your screen and you can also format the micro SD card using this option. 
In order to save your desired settings to the camera, you'll need to generate a QR code. Then you'll need to follow these steps in order to enter barcode scanning mode. And basically it is done by double pressing this button when the camera is not recording. After short pressing this button twice, you are going to enter barcode scanning mode and it is going to be indicated by this green LED over here. Then you'll need to scan the generated QR code using the camera and once the settings are successfully saved, the green LED is going to be turned off and the red LED is going to be turned on. In terms of latency, according to my test, which I performed while the split HD camera was recording and while it wasn't recording, and also using 1080p and 2.7k modes, the added latency is going to be about 30 milliseconds, which means that the total latency of the split HD system end-to-end -end is going to be about 60 milliseconds. While a total latency of 60 milliseconds is definitely not suitable for racing and it is something that you need to be aware of, in my opinion, for just cruising around and for taking cinematic shots, it is something that I and maybe you can live with. Here you can see what it looks like when the split HD system is mounted on the Recon FPV Recon 4FR. And actually, after testing it out, I do not recommend this installation method because there is not a lot of space on the back of the quadcopter. And first of all, the heat is going to interfere with the operation of the Split HD and you are going to encounter issues in case the DVR board is going to be pressed against the carbon fiber plate. So what I would recommend to do is to either mount the DVR board on the top of the Vista unit or even better, mount the DVR board on the center of the drone where there is more space. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the split HD system. I've tested it with and without an ND16 filter and I also stabilized the footage using the Gyroflow application. Unfortunately, or actually fortunately, it is raining so I wasn't able to fully test all the available options so you can expect other videos which are going to compare this camera with other action cameras and also more flight footage to be out soon. At the first glance, what I can tell you is that this is not something that will be able to replace your action camera on larger quadcopters. However, in case you are flying a smaller drone and you would like to have the ability to record footage at a better quality than the one that is being recorded by your DVL goggles, it is something that you might want to consider. Keep in mind though that the added latency is something that is going to affect your flight. Maybe it's going to bother you and maybe not, but it's definitely something that you need to be aware of. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.